The duel between Anakin and Dooku is one of the most pivotal encounters in the Star Wars saga. An emotionally and mentally complex conflict, the duel served as Anakin's turning point towards becoming a Sith Lord. You guys know I love my novelizations, and the Revenge of the Sith novelization is by far one of the best Star Wars books ever written. In the book, the details of this fight and the thoughts of Anakin and Dooku are fleshed out in incredible detail. From start to finish, between both Anakin and Dooku, I want to break down their thoughts and feelings. As the news of Chancellor Palpatine's capture shocked the galaxy, Dooku and Palpatine waited aboard the Invisible Hand. As expected, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker mounted a rescue mission to save the Chancellor, and Dooku observed them as they fought their way through the ship. Speaking to his master, Dooku requested that he be allowed to give Obi-Wan another chance to turn to the dark side, insisting that a Jedi of his integrity would be a vital asset to their new Sith Empire. Now, this in itself is very interesting, showing that Dooku had respect for Obi-Wan, and perhaps he didn't want to kill Qui-Gon's apprentice. Palpatine rejected Dooku's pleas, knowing full well that Obi-Wan would never turn away from the Jedi teachings, and he commanded Dooku to kill Obi-Wan. This whole time, Palpatine had fed Dooku a false plan. Dooku believed that the plan was for him to kill Obi-Wan in the duel, provoking Anakin into a rage that would cause him to tap into the dark side, and Dooku was instructed to merely toy with Anakin. After Anakin gave in to his emotions, Palpatine would reveal himself as Darth Sidious, converting Anakin to the Sith. Anakin would then arrest Dooku, handing him over to the Republic, only to have Dooku re-emerge after Palpatine established the new Sith Empire. Dooku believed that this was what was about to happen, but obviously it was all a lie. Palpatine never intended for him to survive the duel. As the Jedi arrived, Dooku tried to convince them to surrender. Perhaps he wanted to avoid killing Obi-Wan. As they ignited their lightsabers, Dooku noted that Obi-Wan used an Ataru ready stance, mirroring Qui-Gon, and Anakin held his saber in a Xien grip, the defensive variant of Form 5. As the Jedi charged, Dooku retreated on the defensive, his proficiency in combat preventing them from penetrating his defenses. Dooku was still confident that everything was going according to plan, and he was surprised by how predictable and slow the two Jedi were. He considered them to still be as incompetent as they were on Geonosis, and his confidence increased. In reality, both Obi-Wan and Anakin had become much more skilled with their sabers, but they didn't want to reveal this to Dooku, instead attacking him with basic techniques. Suddenly, they switched their styles, aggressively attacking in coordination, forcing Dooku to take the duel more seriously. After force pushing Obi-Wan away, Dooku was forced up the stairs by Anakin. He was shocked by the power emanating from Anakin's heavy blows, and he noted that each strike was draining his force reserves very quickly. Dooku came to several realizations, the first being that Obi-Wan was indeed a master of Form 3, Sorisu. The second was that he could not create any distance between himself and Anakin, who was the finest master of Gem So that he had ever seen. The third was that he had been the one to fall into their trap. They had lulled him into a false sense of superiority. Dooku then accepted that he needed to disable Obi-Wan in order to defeat Anakin. He was no longer maintaining a ruse, he was engaged in deadly combat. Dooku was then able to throw Obi-Wan across the room and knock him unconscious, engaging Anakin alone. Anakin's offensive onslaught increased in intensity, and Dooku took the opportunity to mock Anakin with the Sith method of Dun Mok. Dooku taunted him, remarking that he could feel Anakin's fear, hate, and anger. This was Dooku's biggest mistake. Anakin was afraid in that moment. He was afraid of losing Obi-Wan. Anakin became enraged, losing control, and he channeled his hatred of Dooku into his swordplay, tapping into the dark side. Now, this is the perfect moment to look at Anakin's thoughts. As he lost control of his emotions, he decided that he wanted to do much more than just defeat Dooku. He wanted to take from Dooku what he had lost on Geonosis. Anakin decided to utilize his two greatest assets in that moment, his hatred for Dooku and his youth. Anakin's offensive onslaught came at blinding speed, not giving Dooku a moment to reposition himself and exploiting Makashi's lack of absorbing kinetic energy. 
All Dooku could do was try to block every strike and avoid being killed. As Anakin attacked him, Dooku was taken aback, realizing that he hadn't recognized the true power within Anakin. He knew that this duel no longer rested on who was the superior swordsman, but who was stronger in the dark side. Dooku's age and lack of stamina began to weaken him, and suddenly Anakin penetrated his defenses, severing both of his hands. Anakin had taken the perfect revenge for his arm. At Anakin's mercy, Dooku expected Palpatine to save him, as he had promised he would if the duel went wrong. Instead, he was shocked to see his master betray him and command Anakin to execute him. Dooku then realized the true deception, that Palpatine had never intended for him to survive, and had merely used him as a placeholder, a temporary apprentice, until Anakin was ready. Dooku had never been the true heir to the Sith. He had been a Jedi all his life, and had learned very little of the dark side during his time as Palpatine's apprentice. In contrast, Anakin had endured a harsh life, making the dark side his closest companion even if he didn't know it yet. Dooku realized that perhaps Anakin was already half a Sith in his own right. Dooku knew that the only thing he amounted to in the end was an insignificant piece of the puzzle, a sacrifice for the Sith grand plan. Despite hesitating for a moment, Anakin, falling from grace, killed him. Anakin immediately regretted his actions, but Palpatine eased his conscience by insisting that his act of revenge was justified. This was of course a turning point and one of the most important moments in Anakin's tragic story. I hope that you guys enjoyed this breakdown and I highly recommend that you read the Revenge of the Sith novelization if you haven't already. Thank you guys for watching and may the force be with you.